All right, Jeremy Miner, welcome to the Wednesday. So the Wednesday Live. So on Wednesdays, what I like to do every single week is I like to bring out a client from a completely different industry every single week. We do this 52 weeks a year. We've done this for the past two and a half years since we started. And we interview that client, okay? Could be a B2C client, could be a B2B client. It just depends, okay? And we break down their sales process for you. Okay, so this individual that I'm going to bring out here today, just so you're aware before I bring him out, has only been in the training for six months. He's now in our advanced NEPQ 3.0 training, and he's gone from around a little bit under six grand a month to now well over, I, I believe last month he was over 23 or 24,000 last month in commissions in one month, and he's still learning. He barely got into he went in our, our NEPQ 2.0 training portal, and then about a month ago, he got into our NEPQ advanced 3.0 uh, training portal and group training. So his incomes keep going every month. So we're going to bring out this individual. I'm going to interview him. He has promised to share with you some certain questions and different tonality that we have trained him in our 2.0 portal and specifically in our advanced 3.0 portal and group training. So he promised he's gonna drop some of those nuggets. So we're gonna spend about the next 25 to 30 minutes going through that interview with him, all right? Now, if you are, I'm gonna bring him out here. Connor, how's it going, man? It's going great, thank you. Connor, uh, first of all, Welcome, okay? Uh, I like to interview a new client from a completely different industry every single week. And there's sometimes I'll interview a client that just got started here two months ago. There's sometimes I'll interview a client that's been here six months like you have. Other times, one that maybe it's been here a year, year and a half or two years, okay? It just depends, all right? Now, uh, where do you, where are you, where are you at calling in from? Where are you at? Uh, the suburbs of Chicago. Okay, it's a little bit chilly there sometimes from my understanding? A little chilly. I see. I'm from I'm from Missouri, like a little bit uh, a little bit uh, west of St. Louis. So it's very cold in Missouri, but man, Chicago's on a whole different cold level. It's crazy yeah. those yeah. legs, right? So we're going to talk about that now. If you are brand new to the Facebook group Sales Revolution, because we're going live on Streamyard, so we're going live in the Facebook group Sales Revolution. I just looked, we just hit 55,000 members in that bad boy. We started about a year and a half ago. That thing is growing very fast. So we're going live in the Facebook group, Sales Revolution. We're going live on the Facebook business page. There's almost 90,000 of you in there following us around. We're going live on our YouTube channel. That thing, we just started growing that thing really consistently. I think we're up to almost 30,000 subscribers. We've never done anything on YouTube. And then we're going live on here on our LinkedIn channel and also my personal uh, verified Facebook as well. Now, if you are brand new to all of that, you're like, who is this guy, the, the Hugo Boss dude, seventh level? My name is Jeremy Miner. I'm the founder of seventh level. Now, we are an organization that trains salespeople exactly like you watching me right here today. Okay, so we train sales professionals like you. We train sales executives like you. We train sales management, sales leadership, entrepreneurs, business owners, coaches, consultants. And as Connor is still learning, um, basically what we do is we help you transform the way you and your team sell by learning specific skilled questions and techniques that work with human behavior. What do I mean when I say work with human behavior rather than work against it? Are you sure the questions you're using and the verbiage you are saying is working with human behavior over here, or is it actually causing your prospects to emotionally shut down, leading to tons of objections and sales you are losing that our clients who are in the same industry as you watching are making those every single day? Okay, now that's known as NEPQ. It stands for Neuro Emotional Persuasion Questioning. Okay, now we have to teach you not just the questions, but the delivery of the questions asked at the right time. Okay, so what type of tone are you using when you're asking certain questions? You know, Connor and I are going to talk about this. There are certain questions in your sales process that require more of a, a curious tone. Um, John, maybe walk me through. What type of windows do you have? You know, something like that. Okay, we'll get into that in more detail, but that's more of a curious tone, okay? Um, there's other questions in your repertoire, your 
sales process that require more of a skeptical, a, a challenging tone. What happens if you don't do anything about this? See, that's a skeptical tone, okay? But you can't be skeptical in the beginning. You don't have any trust or credibility yet with that prospect. There's other parts of your sales process and questions you have to learn that require more of a, a concern tone, a, a tone that shows more empathy. What's really holding you back from moving forward? See, that's a concern tone. Well, how do you know when to shift your tone? Because there's even questions you should be asking where you're gonna start with a more challenging tone, but then end the question with more of a concern tone. Well, how do you do that? And when do you know to do that? Because if you don't understand that, that means you're losing deals that you could be making right now, every single day, okay? Because your prospects have problems and your solution solves those. So if your prospects have problems and your solution solves those, why are they not buying from you? What's the missing link? We're gonna talk about that today. The missing link is our sales ability. That's the missing link. And we'll talk about that, okay? Now, if you're on the live right now, I see some of you do that, go down to the bottom here and I'm gonna have you post hashtag live. So if you're on the live right now, post hashtag live. If you're on the live right now, okay? I better see a ton of these. So if you're on the live right now, go down to your phone. I better see a ton of hashtag lives because it's a very nice day here in Scottsdale. It's actually, well, hold on. No, it stopped raining. It's about 75. Maybe go golf. So I want you to post hashtag live. And if you're on, thank you, Walker. Thank you, Regis. Thank you, Tim. There's a bunch of you posting hashtag live. Some of you on StreamYard, it just says Facebook user. So I can't tell who you are. David on LinkedIn. Thank you. Now, if you're on the replay, Oh, Martin, I see you now. Carlos, Jay, Alan, Jimmy, welcome to the call. All right, uh, Gia, Kyleen, welcome, all right. Now, if you're on the replay, post hashtag replay. So if you're on the replay, post hashtag replay. Now, also, I'm gonna have each of you go to your phone. I'm gonna have you smash the heart button and smash the like button. Tim, you're right, always a nice day in Scottsdale. Smash the heart button, smash the like button. I better see hundreds. There's 73, 75 of you on here between YouTube and the Facebook group and LinkedIn, all right? Uh, smash the heart button, smash the like button. So smash the heart button, smash like button. I better see hundreds of smashed hearts. Why would I have Connor give you some of these different questions and tonality without you smashing the heart button and smashing the like button? I'm sure he's got better things to do. All right, uh, now, if you're wanting to acquire some of these skills we're gonna talk a little bit about today because I wanna make sure everybody understands if you watch me on Instagram with all of our reels or LinkedIn with our reels or Facebook with our reels or YouTube with our shorts, what I'm giving you in those reels and shorts are little bitty nibbles compared to what our clients learn who go through our virtual training courses and group training with myself and our trainers. So I want you to imagine a 110,537 piece puzzle. If you're watching me on Reels, or if you're watching some stuff on YouTube, I'm giving you about three to four of those pieces of that puzzle. The rest, you have no idea. You have no idea what connection questions are and how to use them with the right tone. No idea what situation questions ask for your industry and why you're asking them and with what tone. You have no idea what problem awareness questions to ask and how to get prospects to open up and pull you in. I don't give any of that in the reels. You don't know how to ask consequence questions and how to respond if they don't land. Well, what do you do then? because they're not always gonna land 100% of the time. You don't know how to ask situ solution awareness questions to get them to focus on what their future is gonna look like once all the newfound problems are solved. You don't know how to gap build. You don't know how to ask commitment questions and what commitment questions work for what industry. I, I mean, I could list 10,000 other things that we don't give out in reels and lives like this. So if you want to acquire those skills like our clients are who are in the same industry as you watching me in the shirt, who are making, literally making two, three, and five times what you are right now, not because they're cooler or because they're just really strong or they have really nice nails or legs, none of that matters. It's simply they have more advanced sales ability than you do now because they've acquired it from us. That's it. That's the only difference that separates you from them, okay? Now, I looked up Connor's industry that he's in Connor, do you know what the average salesperson in your industry makes per year? I do not. $5,436.21. Okay. 
And within six months of you going through an EPQ, you're already at 24,000 a month. And I can assure you in six months from now, you should be, as long as you're staying in EPQ 3.0, making double that in your industry, maybe higher. Okay. We have reps in your industry that make them over a million dollars a year now. Okay. Now, Connor, why don't you tell us what you sell? What industry are you in? What do you do over there, dude? Window replacement. So window replacement, sliding door replacements, entry doors, home improvements, however you want to That's look at That's considered the home improvement industry. So yeah. the first question I always have to ask anybody that I interview on here, okay? Were you born out of your mother's womb with <laughs> advanced questioning skills? I was not. Okay, so you weren't born out of your mother's womb, just advanced questioning, just coming out of your lips. Okay. Were you born with advanced tonality skills? Absolutely not. Okay. Were you born with advanced objection prevention and advanced objection handling skills? Definitely not those. So what you're suggesting to all of us here is you had to learn those skills. Yep. You had to acquire those skills. Yes. Okay. So if you want to acquire those skills, we're going to give you a little hint on here. Message me directly right now. So if you're in the Facebook group or LinkedIn or the base Facebook business page or my Facebook, message me directly right now. If you're on YouTube, you'll have to join the Facebook group because you can't message me directly on YouTube. Okay. If you can't figure out how to message me because you're an old dude that doesn't understand social media like myself, then post hashtag NEPQ, hashtag NEPQ. And either myself or one of our stunt doubles will message you back some different training options for your industry if you want to make a lot more than you are now, like Connor is. All right, Connor, nobody cares about me. They just care about themselves. Let's talk here. So walk me back before you got this job. So you just got into home improvement sales about six months ago, right? Correct. Yeah. With what did you do before then? Uh, fitness coaching. So I actually, I still own a personal training studio, but home improvement was completely new. No experience. Okay. So you were, okay. So what caused you to kind of get out of the, the fitness stuff? I know you still got it, but what caused you to get out of that and get in, into sales into like a, a random industry? Um, you know, Matt Ryder actually mentioned something. He said it's skills and opportunity and I just, and income opportunity is much higher in the home improvement. Okay. So that's what initially attracted You're like, Hey, I need to make some more money. So you dove in head first six months ago. Yes. And walk me through when you join that company, you know, walk me through what type of sales training did you go through? What happened before any PQ, before you knew yeah. anything about us? So it was a full time, it was a six week full time in company training program. Yeah. Now that's going to be a lot about the ins and outs of the industry. Of how the windows work. Yeah, yeah, I have to do like actual assessments and things like that too. So you learned how to measure the window <laughs> and all that stuff. Okay. All so that. You, you took the sales training, the product knowledge. Yes. And you jumped in and tell us what happened in the beginning. So well, I mean it I fell pretty much flat on my face. So oh, well, yeah. tell, me, tell me what happened. How did, what do you mean by you fell flat on your face? A lot of Lower closing percentage, a lot of, I need to think about it. Um, so you'd go out, you'd make a presentation like they taught you. Yes. Nice, cool. Did you do it on an iPad or like flip chart? What'd you do? Yeah, so I have an iPad down there that I you built. had an iPad, some really cool slides, bells and whistles, makes it look really pretty, but yet they were still saying they wanted to think it over. Why? Yeah, the, well, the biggest change I've had from that training to your training was waiting to present at the end. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in that style of doing it, I would be presenting up front really early okay. and it got me a lot of resistance. Okay. Cause you, you, there was no gap. No, I was presenting okay. with zero gap. Where, okay. <laughs> it's very hard to sell yeah. if, if they don't feel any gap from where they are compared to where they want to be. And that's the problem. Most of your prospects don't even know what the real situation is when you first start talking to them in any industry. They might have an idea, but they don't understand the depth of the problem. Right. They don't understand the consequences of what happens if they don't do anything about solving the problem. So you sell windows. So what's what are people's main problems that you're selling to? Are they just old drafty windows? Like what's the problem? Yeah, old drafty windows, rot, that kind of thing. Okay. It gets cold. Gets cold. Yeah. So one thing you're solving besides the draft coming in is you're helping probably, I'm assuming, reduce their 
electric bills because I'm assuming those are really high in the winter when the, the air gets sucked out, the cold air comes in, right? Takes more to heat the home. So you're helping them save money. What else are you helping them solve? Just the enjoyment of the home. So yeah. being able to like a lot of times they can't open the windows or they're a pain to open them. So then they don't end up enjoying the home. They don't enjoy the home in the summer. It could be, I mean, there's so many different things in every industry, nuances. It could be that maybe they have a newborn that sleeps up in the room upstairs, but because the windows are so up there, it's cold yeah. causing the newborn to cry all the time. And then the mom and dad are exhausted, hard to go to. I mean, there's so many different things that could be going on with the old windows, right? Yeah. Okay. So what caused you to be like, you know what? This product knowledge sales training that this company has given me is not really making me a lot of money. What caused you to go out and find like, hey, I need to acquire more advanced sales ability. I need to learn better questioning, better tone. What caused you to do that? So I got NAPQ kind of early in my training. And, and the reason is that is I think the core to be successful at anything is to model people who have had success. Probably a smart idea. Yes. Yeah. So I like to get ahead of things versus uh, get way behind the ball. Get way behind and then hope and pray it changes and keep doing the same thing. That's probably a winning strategy. So you got into our NEPQ 2.0 portal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which you're you're going to know. You pro I don't know if you know this, but you do know I reshot all of NEPQ 2.0 about four weeks ago. It's being edited right now. And there's 15 new hours of NEPQ 2.0 that you've never seen yet. Did you know that? I did not. Oh, the surprise, surprise. You're going to log in here in a couple of weeks when it's fully edited. And you're like, oh, my gosh, there's certain things in here he didn't include in the first version of NAPQ 2.0 because I added about five hours more of content. And then I went through and made about 25 percent different changes to the first 12 hours. So you're welcome. So the first 15 hours, you're going to be like, wow, I better go through that a bunch. Now, you got into the portal. Now, here's one thing that that I really love about your story. This is why I wanted to interview you. Okay, just so you know, because we, we train a lot of people in your industry that do really well, a lot of different industries. But I, when I heard this story, I'm like, I want to interview that guy. Okay. We, as a company, we are massive. We're very big on data and collecting data from our clients. Okay. So just so everybody knows, we onboard around 1,200 to 1,600 new clients every single month, month after month, month. I mean, you're talking from 158 different industries your industry, every industry watching me here, okay? It could be a business that we're onboarding, okay? Or it could be like an individual like yourself, all right? But around 12 to 1,500 new clients every month. And that's not including like if they're a business that have 3,000 salespeople, I'm not including all those salespeople. That would be like one client, a business, okay? So we track everything. We track every single client, Every time we see a testimonial posted, because we get about 30 to 50 new testimonials every day. We have a little bit over 13,000 now, something like that. And I saw yours the other day, by the way. Well done. And so when we see a testimonial, we have our people go back. Uh, our Sam Griner is our vice president of delivery. And they go back and his team, they track it. So they put in your information and they're like, they can see how many hours you've gone through in the portal. They can see how many times you've logged in. They can see how many times you've went through certain sections and certain sections you didn't go through. And we monitor all of it. And you know what? The one thing that stands out from a salesperson or company who within six months makes four to five times the income or sales. Do you know what the one thing that separates somebody from maybe they're just increase their sales by 20 percent or 50 percent compared to the guy or gal that increased it by 500 percent? You know what the one thing is? Take a How many times they go through the portal? Yeah. 100%. There is nothing else that differentiate our clients from ones who might, might only make a 30 to 50% improvement in sales compared to the ones like you that within six months are up four to 500%. Mm -hmm. It's just how many times they go through the portal. Now, tell us how many times you've gone through the portal in six months. I think I went through 2.0 like 16 times. <laughs> A lot. Yeah. You went through it over 20 or over 200 some hours. Yeah. A lot. Now, when you go, I can't remember the exact numbers, like 227 hours. When now that takes dedication. Now, every time you went through that portal again, what did you pick up that you didn't understand the time before? What changed for you? 
there's just always something new. I mean, there's nuance to every sale. So it's every, every part of 2.0 or even 3.0 is just another tool to have in the toolkit. So yeah. it's on the ready when it becomes appropriate to take it out. And that's the key because every single situation you're in with your prospect, it never goes cookie cutter 100%. There's always a little wiggle, right? They'll say something that throws you off for a second. Well, how do you, how do you, how do you loop around and get them back involved. Uh, they could ask a question that you have have heard before, but they're asking it for a different reason. And now you have to do this and bring, there's always tweaks and you have to know where to go. And if you only go through our virtual training portal one time, you'll make more sales just because you'll, you'll just use a couple more questions you never knew how to ask before. Your tone will shift a few here and there. But if you're wanting to go from five grand a month to 25 grand a month in six months, you're going to keep going over and over and over. And the thing is, the next six months, as you keep going through it over and over and over, guess what's going to happen? You're going to keep picking up more nuances, more tweaks, and it's going to start to conceptualize and make even more sense to you. So you know exactly where to go, no matter what the prospect does, says, ask, you know exactly where to balance, where to tweak, where to change, and to get them back on board. Now, let's give them maybe a few examples. So this is really important. So if you're one of our clients watching us right now, or let's say that you're about to get into one of our virtual training platforms or group training. We have all the data. The more times you go through the portal. And, and Connor, tell us how you did that. Was it like, I'm just going to crash through it like a, you know, a, a, a TV series over the weekend? Or did you just say like every day I'm spending 40 minutes and at this time I'm doing it? Like, how did you organize that? Yeah. So, I mean, the reason I also about to answer both. But the reason behind it is in my industry, no script. So you well, want you're to, going in their home. It's not like yeah. you just sit there and have your questions written on your forearm that you just look at, right? Yeah. You gotta really memorize what you're talking about. And it's a different every home every the door opens and it's a completely unique environment. So okay. it's um that was the reason for the training. And you know, putting in the hours is important, but I think you have to do it in a way that's sustainable. Yeah. So I've just changed car time as NEPQ time. Mm. See, this is smart. And the good thing that we did uh, that you might not be aware of, Connor, in the portal, we you know how they have the quizzes and stuff now? And the quizzes yeah. are good. But what we did is we removed them from the, the this version of it so you can listen to it at the in the car mm -hmm. anytime that you want on your phone, anything, because you don't have to take the quiz. There you go. Yeah, I had to <laughs> quiz and drive, but we won't talk about I don't want you to have to take the quiz. <laughs> yeah, because what I didn't like about it, and the portal is amazing, but what I didn't like about it is when you're driving around in the car, you have to almost take the quiz to go to the next section. You do. And that's hard. So a lot of salespeople could only do it in the morning on their computer and all that drive time where they could be learning and going through the portal, you know, over and over and over going through appointments or errands. They just didn't have it. So now that's all solved. Boom. Yeah. It'll be even better. <laughs> all right. <laughs> now let's give them some, some, uh, <clears throat> some tactical stuff. So, when you get into the home now, okay, um, what's maybe give us an example of one, maybe a connection question that you ask now that you never asked before and kind of like how they respond to that, why it's so important to ask that for your industry. Yeah, so I, the attracted attention question, I've changed it a little bit for mine where I just say, um, so before we get started, what prompted you to book the assessment today? Okay, and they say? Um, I, so I, I say it that way because they'll tell me what the problem is that they're having with the windows. Yeah. And then, I, and then I'll acknowledge that and then, oh, okay. And then what was it about the company that attracted your attention? Yeah. And another way you can do it is you can say, so, so, um, maybe I, uh, if just so I have an understanding, what, what prompted you to, to have us come out today? Just so I understand the background. Well, we, you know, we're kind of looking at this and, and can I also ask like, cause there's a lot of different companies out there. What caused you to have us come out here compared to, you know, 50 other companies. Sometimes you can ask that depends now in your industry, cause some people will get multiple bids and quotes. I'd probably reword that a little bit differently because then they could say, well, yeah, we're also having XYZ company come out tomorrow too. All right. So there's a couple other connection questions you want to ask for your space, but how does the prospect like, but just by asking that question, can I ask what prompted you to have us come out just so I have a better understanding? How do they respond to that? Yeah. No, well, when I say the, usually if I say what attracted your attention, they were giving me, they would go right into price focused. So when I asked, said the, when I said the prompting, the assessment, 
Yeah. That got them more towards the problem focus. Yeah, exactly. That's a big shift for your industry. For this industry. And other, other industries attracted your attention would give a different result. But these are the tweaks that you learn by going through group training. You can't learn these tweaks by just going through a platform. Exactly. Right. You have to have both. OK, this is why the group training is so important. Now, what's it? And there's other questions you have to ask in connection, but we don't have time to do that. What about a situation question? What's one good because you have to find out what their current situation is. And most prospects don't really know what yeah, their current so, situation so is. So typically in, in situation, because it's the more logistical questions. Yeah. So I'm going to ask them, I want to figure out how old the windows are. Yeah. So I'll ask them, how long have they been in the home for? Yeah. And then I'll really quickly ask them, have they replaced the windows since they've been in the home? And then I'll also know just because of part of our process, I want to know if there's a homeowners association as well. Now, are you setting down when you're asking them that? Or are you saying, can you, can you possibly uh, show me the windows you're looking at? What are you I'm playing both ways. So, cause it's, yeah, sometimes when you go right to the window, it, it can be hard to get some of that pertinent information. Okay. Um, but taking control at the window is better because then I can go right into problem awareness. Yeah. So, so like I said, yeah, because we train a lot of people in your space, probably thousands, actually. And so you can do it either or. A lot of times when we're in the group training, we'll be like, and can you, um, and you kind of almost act confused. You don't want to say, hey, show me the window because you're gruff, right? Can you um, possibly show me the, the windows you were looking at possibly replacing? Yeah, sure. Go ahead and come over there. Ah, oh, okay. Now, you have to ask the situation questions a little bit different if you're looking at the window compared to yeah. if you're in the living room, right? Yeah. You, you can't just come up to the window and be like, what type of windows are these? Right? Because then you look like you don't know what you're talking about, right? Yeah. But if you're sitting down on the couch, you can do that. Yeah. Typically, I, I like to go sit down just for a moment just to get the initial information and then we'll go from there. And then once I hear what the problem is, I'll say, well, let's go take a look at the window. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can you, can you possibly show me the, the windows in that's a, it's even a, instead of saying, let's go look at the windows. I'm okay with that, Connor. But one thing you can do to get them to start pulling you in more is you can say, can you, um, could you guys possibly show me the windows? Yeah, yeah, sure. We'll show you the windows. It's yeah. just a, it's just a lighter way to get them to pull you in with what you do, just so you know. Okay. Now we didn't even teach you that in the portal. Okay. Now, um, there's some other situation questions you have to ask for your space, but let's go into problem awareness. Mm -hmm. What's a good question you asked to get them to see that maybe they have some problems they didn't realize or understand they had? Yeah. And this is one I've tweaked also with the advanced training a little bit, but the original one I did and I had great success with it was, do you like the windows that you currently have? Okay, that's one way to do it. I'd probably reword it. What's another yeah, way? I, I changed it. So typically they'll have the windows for say 20 years or so. Yeah. So there's a clear problem here. So I don't want to avoid that. So I'll say, well, it can't be all doom and gloom. What have you liked about the windows? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And why do you why do you say it that way? Tell us why you say that way. There's a psychological reason why we teach you how to do that. Well, one, there's a couple of walls, one, so I can get into the two truths, but yeah. then the, the psychological reason is, is I think they're expecting me to pull those in there to sell them windows and go right to the problem yeah. where it just kind of makes the conversation more natural. Yeah. Now with the windows you have, I mean, I know you brought us out here to possibly look to replace them, but it can't be all doom and gloom. What do you like about these windows? And they'll tell you what they like, but they'll also probably tell you what they don't like when you say that, don't they? Yeah. And it is important to know what they like, because when you're replacing them, you're not necessarily totally changing them. Yeah. See, yeah. The, the psychological power by asking that question is they're going to tell you what they like, but now they feel more comfortable in telling you what they don't like because they don't yeah. feel like they're forced. That's a huge psychological shift. I hope somebody picked that up, what we just did there. That's really important. Now, there's more to that because when they tell you what they don't like, we have to clarify and probe off that. So give, maybe, give me an example of the last sale you made. You can go back to that, okay? And what did they say they didn't like? Um, it was drafty windows. Okay, and how did they say it? Did they just say, oh, we just don't like the draft or did they expand? Um, that particular one, they were kind of a little off, but then I probed and then got to them to expand. Tell us how you probe. So yeah, I don't really like the, the draft coming in. Oh, okay. Has that had an impact on the home? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I would even say, I like that. I would have first, for, I, you, a way to set that up where you can build even more of a gap. Mm -hmm. hold, hold on. 
draft because you know that a draft in one home is sometimes different than another home when you say draft tell me tell me what you mean by the draft yeah. well i mean see that builds a little bit more of a gap there before you then ask that question you just asked yeah a lot of times i will say like oh how do you mean draft that's good see that's better because yeah. now you're clarifying and see even though you might know what they mean by the draft which you really don't but you might assume you do because you talk to people every day about windows you want the prospect to tell you about the draft mm -hmm. because they're not telling you they're telling themselves you want yeah. them to take you you want them to feel that pain even though you might already know it you want them to feel that because that's where the buying that's where that's where the sales made in that emotion right yeah. okay so um so you clarify oh, hold on how do you mean by draft and what do they say um they'll then they'll just kind of be logistical they'll say oh there's wind coming in over here or you know there's a little bit of air coming in here mm, a little bit of air what how do you mean see i'd, I'd even clarify that oh, hold on a little bit of air like what do you mean now would you also want to find out what their bills are like in the winter with that draft yeah, yeah. A lot of times that's that's not always as readily available as the discomfort they're feeling. Yeah, yeah. but it's just another way. So, so one thing you can do in situation questions with your industry, because we do this with your industry and and solar as well, is we'll say, can you tell me a little bit more about your bill? Like, I know a lot mm. of the year the bill's pretty low, but what have your bills gotten up to recently? Yeah, that's really good. See what I just did there? Yeah, I'll add that in right away. Psychological thing. Now, can you tell me a little bit more about your, you would say like electric bill, right? Yeah, energy bill. Can you, can you tell me a little bit more about like your electric bill? Like I, I know most of the year it's pretty low, but what have they been making you pay recently? Or what have they been going up to recently? Now, why would I say I know a lot of the year they're pretty low. So I, why would I downplay it? So they upplay it. Yes, because as a human being, when I downplay it, they're like, oh my gosh, no, it's horrible. But if I upplay it, yeah, I know the bills are really, really bad around here. They've been going up. Oh, they're not that bad. They'll, they'll downplay it if you upplay it. So when you downplay, now, can you tell me a little bit more about like your electric bill? Like I know a lot of, I know most of the year it's pretty low, but what have they been going up to recently? That's a good question because like, yeah, in the winter, man, it's been bad. Like we've been having to pay like, Blah, 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 blah. And see, that's another thing. Yeah. That they're now associating the cost of their electric bill to the problem. And now it's not just staying warm in the winter, but it's also about saving money. So the more reasons you're able to get them to say what they don't like, the bigger the gap builds and the easier it is for them to want to change. The less reasons you're able to get out of them, the gap is much smaller harder it is for them to want to change. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there you go. You're learning something new every day. Now, tell me, we've got just a couple minutes here. Uh, tell me a good solution awareness question. You're getting them to, you're asking them to get them to see what the future is going to look like once these newfound problems are solved. Yeah. So like kind of like the ideal criteria? Anything. I don't care. Oh, okay. Well, I, I usually start off the solution awareness with, um, before we talk today, what have you done about changing the windows if any. Yeah, okay, before we he had me come out, were you out there looking for, you know, different windows you could put in that would, you know, lower your electric bill, get the draft out? Or what, what were you doing about getting the, the, the bill lower or whatever the problem they said they had, right? Yeah. Okay. Why do you ask that question? Because I want to know what they've done. And a lot of times you can probe there too, because if, the, if they've been having a problem for two years mm -hmm. and they haven't done anything about it, then it's a good time to bring up like, well, what's prevented you from... Yeah, it gets them to internalize, like, why have I not changed this yet? <laughs> you know, yeah, it reduces yeah. your I want to think it over. Uh, we're running out of time, but what's a good consequence question you use to get them to see what the consequences are if they don't do anything? So, when we're at the window, kind of looking at it, I'd say, Have you thought about what would happen if you didn't change these windows and the draft got worse? Have you thought about what would happen if you didn't change out these windows and your bill kept going up? Or something like that. Okay, so you're you're putting in the negative thing they don't like at the end, and how do they typically react to that? Um, you got to give them like usually give people space to answer the question, but then they'll think about it, and then no, I haven't thought about it, and then I I would say, well, if you thought about it, and then they would usually answer. See, that's a good technique. So if they're like, I haven't really thought. Well, if you really thought about it, yeah. Well, if you really thought about it, 
Because a lot of times they're, pretty, they're in pretty bad shape. I mean, it's it's not a secret. It's pretty visual. It's pretty visual. Okay. Yeah. Now we're, we're, we don't have time to go through your presentation. What's a good commitment question you ask at the end to get them to commit to take the next step, purchase what you're offering? Yeah. So after the presentation and everything, I've shown them everything. Then I would say, do you feel like this could be the answer for you? Why did you Why did you use a verbal pause there? Um, just. Yeah, well, because you taught me to, but. <laughs> yeah, tell everybody why you wouldn't want to say, do you feel like this could be the answer for you? Why say, do you feel like this could be the answer for you? See the verbal pause, why would we do that psychologically at the prospect? Just so it doesn't feel scripted. It's not so scripted. At, at Feels it. natural. Yeah, but when, we have, when we have a verbal pause right before a word we really want to emphasize, answer for you. It causes the human being to think deeper about the question we're asking. That's the biggest reason, especially when we slow down. All right, Connor, well done. Hey, congratulations on your results going from five grand a month to 24 grand a month within six months in commission, same industry. You keep going through the portal, the 3.0, work, especially with the group training with our trainers yeah. and myself on Tuesday. Uh, I mean, I would say within six months, you should be double that income. You should be up to 45 grand plus a month. Um, and then if you keep going, eventually if you get an inner circle, that's where you're going to get up to 70, 80, 100 grand a month in commissions. We have a lot of people that have been through inner circle program in your space that make that now. Yeah, the, the live trainings have been a game changer for three. In what way? Um, so you have the portal, but then when you go through like the Facebook live trainings in the private group, I've been doing a lot of the skills with James. Yeah. And um, James is one of our sales trainers. Yeah. 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 It's absolutely phenomenal because you, it, there's so much nuance and you just see so many different situations. I think when I was just going through the portal over and over again, it was the same yellow brick road where yeah. you see things go all over the place. But then he really teaches you how to pull that. 100%. 100%. All right. Well done. Now, you guys want to start acquiring some of these advanced skills because, like I said, in these little lives, the little reels, things you see online that we do, if you're not a client, are very basic that we give you compared to what Connor and tens of thousands of our clients go through through our virtual training portals and our group training that's more industry specific, okay? So you wanna acquire those skills, those elite skills. You wanna start making your first 10 grand a month in commissions in your industry or your first 15 or 20 grand every single month or 25 or 30 grand every single month with what you sell or higher, message me directly right now. That, Connor, is that how you did it? You just messaged me directly one day and you got on a call with one of our team members? I did actually. Yeah. You know, I did the, uh, originally I did the black book of questions, okay. then got a call, call 2.0, now 3.0. And now I'll, I'll never know. What, what yeah. would have happened if you never booked a call with one of our team members to go through the different op training options we have? I don't want to think about it, but if I thought about it, it would not be good. You'd probably, <laughs> it's probably still be at five or six grand a month. Yeah, I would, I would not be where I was today. Absolutely. So I definitely appreciate everything you guys put into the program. It means a lot. That's so important. I see some people message in the Facebook group. I don't want to book a call. Well, you don't have to. You just stay at the same income you're at. Uh, we book calls because we're a sales training organization and we can't, we don't have one training program with one price. We have 26 different training programs and group training options. And it depends on your industry you're in. It depends on if you're a rookie or a veteran salesperson. It depends on your commission level you're at now compared to what you're wanting. There's different factors that we take in consideration. And once the team member understands those factors, we then suggest the training program that we know is going to make you the most sales the quickest. And I'll, and I'll say too to that, I was one of those people who was resistant to the book, the call. Yeah. And thank God I did. Cause I honestly, I'd be, I'd be where I was when I started. I was resistant to it, but get on the call, get the help. And then if you do, I mean, what type of sales training company would we be if we didn't have you booked in calls and we just threw out prices all over the place? Are we going to teach you how to do that with your guys' prospects? Yeah. Probably not going to help you sell that much, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. We actually do what we train salespeople to do. That's why it works. Good Lord. All right, Connor, well done. Congratulations, everybody. See you soon. Thanks for the interview, Connor. You're the man. Appreciate it, dude. Keep Thank it you. doing good.
Hey guys, if you enjoy these, here's another you can watch right over here, right over here. Join our free sales revolution group. Click the link below, join us, and we're gonna help you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon.